first of all, I just want to introduce myself. My name is uh, Brian Kelly, and I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. And um, I was raised Jewish on my mom's side, and I was raised Catholic on my dad's side. I was born in 1975, born again in 1996. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ for that. It's very important that everybody in this life has two births, a physical Amen. birth and a spiritual birth. Amen. And how I came to know the Lord Jesus Christ was a, a rough midnight street preacher, you know, led me to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. His name is uh, Brian Brady. Keep him in prayer. He now lives in uh, Arizona. And um, what happened was I was walking down the street in Brooklyn, New York, in this neighborhood called Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. And um, it was a Saturday afternoon. 1996, and he was on that corner street preaching. He was wearing a Dr. Ruffin shirt. It said Bible Believer on it, a picture of a King James Bible. And he gave me a gospel tract from Fellowship Track League, the one that says, you have God's word on it, a picture of a King James Bible. And he asked me a question. He said, if you die today, where would you go, heaven or hell? So I said, I would go to heaven. And he asked me why I thought that. I said, because I'm a good person. My mom always told me I'm a good old boy. You know, which I wasn't, of course, you know. So then he took me down the Romans road. He showed me in Romans 3.10 where it says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Show me in Romans 3.12 where it says, There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Show me in Romans 3.23 where it says, For all have sinned and come show the glory of God. Took me to Romans, you know, 6.23 where it says, For the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He told me that, you know, because I'm a sinner, that I deserve to die and go to hell. That's the bad news, but the good news is that the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, he loved me enough to die for me. He showed me Romans 5.8 where it says, But God commanded his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Amen. And then he showed me, you know, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 and 4, where it says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. And then he showed me where Jesus told Nicodemus that you must be born again, and that I had to also be born again because I was born wrong. We were all born wrong the first time. We were all right, born in right, sin. Right. And I needed a new birth, a spiritual birth. And he gave me an invitation to receive the Lord Jesus Christ that day. And that day the Holy Ghost of God, the Holy Spirit of God, showed me I was a sinner on my way to hell. On my way to hellfire. And the scariest thing was I was on my way to a burning hell. And I didn't even know it. Yeah. And rightfully so, if I would have died without right, receiving right. the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll be burning in hell right now. I'll be burning in hellfire. So that's one of the reasons why I do now what I do for the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah. Because there's got to be, you know, billions and billions of people out there just like myself who don't know they're on their way to a burning hell. Yeah, on their way Come on. to the lake of fire. So just I ask you to keep me in prayer and keep our church in prayer, our ministry in prayer. I pastor a small house church in uh, the Bronx, New York. We did have a uh, church in Manhattan. We were renting space from different places, but it's so expensive. But I still consider our church to be in Manhattan, and we are the only Bible-believing church in Manhattan with almost wow. 2 million people without a church building, without a place to meet. Basically, we meet on the street. We set up on the street, tables, chairs, you know, speaker, pulpit. You know, if you've seen our church Facebook page or some of our YouTube videos. And um, there's just a, like the... Luke, Paul Lucas said earlier, there's a famine land for hearing the true word of God. Yeah. Amen. And what I mean by a Bible-believing church is a church that doesn't correct the King James Bible. Hey, man. Hey, man. Like going back to the Hebrew and Greek, and a church that believes the King James Bible is the final authority on matters of faith and practice. <laughs> so, you know, there's, there's a Bible-believing church in Brooklyn, there's a Bible-believing church in the Bronx, there's a Bible-believing church in Staten Island, but Queens doesn't have a Bible-believing church with over a million people. And we're the only Bible-believing church in Manhattan. And like I said, um, New York City is one of the greatest mission fields in the world. You can literally reach the whole world from New York City. There's over 700 languages spoken in, in New York City. And um, a short testimony. You know, I believe the reason why I got saved is somebody was praying for me. Yeah, you know, we know yeah. that the Lord Jesus Christ is praying for us. But also, my, my, my mom and my dad, you know, they had gone on 
vacation when I was a little baby, little, little baby boy, and they were on their way back from uh, Las Vegas, and they ran out of money, and they stopped at a small Baptist church in Kentucky to try to get up enough gas money to make it back to New York City. And the pastor there, and the brethren there at the church, they were very hospitable, gave my dad and my mom enough money to get me and them back to New York City. I believe that's the reason why I got saved, because I believe that Baptist pastor and yeah. church, that church family prayed from not just my mom and my dad, but myself, the, the brother that led me to the Lord Jesus Christ, Brother Brian Brady. One week later, he led both my mom and dad to the Lord yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. So praise the Lord Glory Jesus to God. Christ for that. But I really believe I'm, I'm, I'm saved today because of that Baptist church, that Baptist pastor, and, and you know, little Baptist church in Kentucky, and those, those brethren, brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ, pray for me, me and my, my, my mom and dad. Like the Bible says, Amen. what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. and now shall be saved in thy house. Amen. And now I'm a Baptist pastor, a Baptist preacher, myself, King James only. But it's just so supernatural, you know, being saved, being born again, being a born again Christian. Amen. But I want you to take your King James Bibles this morning. Amen. Turn anywhere in the King James Bible. It's all good. But look here in uh, Luke chapter number 12. Look at verses 47 and 48. I'm very bad with uh, timing, so I have to really set my watch over here. So about 45 minutes, right? So it's 11.14 now, so around a little bit before 12. Is that? Okay. Here in Luke chapter 12, verses 47 and 48, the King James Bible says, and that servant, which knew his Lord's will, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not, and did commit things worthy of stripes, shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required, and to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask the more. So I want to focus in the middle of that verse where the Lord Jesus Christ says, For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. Amen. You know, think about those words, brethren. That's the Lord Jesus Christ speaking there. Do you realize what we've been given as born-again Christians, as King James Bible believers, as, you know, Ruckmanites, if you're a believer in uh, the Lord Junkyard Dog, Dr. Peter S. Ruckman's yeah. doctrine, teaching, I beg no apology to be associated with Dr. Ruckman. I Amen. consider him, after the Holy Ghost Amen. of God, the Holy Spirit of God, to be the greatest Bible teacher ever in the body of Christ. Yeah. And for that, I get a lot of slack. People say I worship, you know, Dr. Ruckman. I'm like, no, I give honor to honors due. Amen. And nobody Amen. on the face of this earth, except maybe for Brother Jack Chick, has left a legacy for the Lord Jesus Christ and the King James Bible, like Dr. Peter S. Ruckman. And, you know, I'm just so thankful that not only did the Lord Jesus Christ save me from hell, you know, save me from hellfire, but, you know, I got the right doctrine from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, the day I got saved was a Saturday afternoon, 1996, and the next day I got brought to Blessed Hope Baptist Church in Brooklyn, New York. The pastor at the time was Pastor Robert Militello. He now writes articles in a bulletin, a Bible Believer's Bulletin. You probably read some of his articles if you get the bulletin. So right from the get-go, I had the right foundation, the Lord Jesus Christ, the King James Bible. So I'm without excuse. I can't claim ignorance at the judgment seat of Christ. Right, right. And the Lord Jesus Christ says, to whom much is given, much is required. So think, think about it. Our accountability before the Lord Jesus Christ, our, our responsibility before the Lord Jesus, it's so great that how could we not obey this King James Bible? Because yeah. that's the only way you can have any peace. You're not going to have any peace if you know the Word, you know the Lord, and you're going against the Lord, you're going against Amen. the Word. Amen. And you know... We have, our, our job as born-again Christians, as King James Bible believers, it's more important than the President of the United States of America. It's more, our job is more important than President Donald Trump because right. souls hang in the balance. Yeah, amen. Souls weigh in the balance. <laughs> to be amen. honest with you, you know, I don't really feel comfortable dressed in a monkey suit up here like this. <laughs> I'd rather be in my Jesus Saves from Hell shirt. I'd rather be wearing my Trust Jesus shirt. 
Because, you know, the Jehovah false witnesses, they dress up, they're going to hell, they're going to hell, find the Mormons, they're going to hell. They dress up. Man looks on the outward appearance, but yeah. the Lord looks on the heart. Right? Amen. Amen. But once the Lord Jesus Christ saves you from hell, once the Lord Jesus Christ saves you from hellfire, once the Lord Jesus Christ saves you from the lake of fire, we now have a mission. We're on a rescue mission to save souls from hell. Yeah. And we don't do the saving. The Lord Jesus Christ does the saving, but he wants to use us. Because the Bible says one plants and other waters, God gives the increase. But I want you to go to Proverbs chapter 29. And, um, you know, some people are against Facebook. Some people are against social media. Some people are against YouTube. But I want to testify that the Lord has used Facebook in my life. The Lord has used YouTube in my life to encourage me. That to know we're not the only ones out there. That the Lord still has 7,000. Still has a remnant that haven't bowed their knees Amen. to hell. Amen. And th th this church is living proof of it. You know, Pastor Lucas and his family is living proof of it. You know, your brethren are living proof of it. But here in uh, Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18, the King James Bible says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. And the first part of this verse says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. And I want to read uh, from uh, the Ruckman Reference Bible here. This note here that uh, Dr. Ruckman has about this verse. It's not inspired. Don't get inspired. It's the text. Amen? Amen. But I'll tell you, this verse, th this footnote here, has given me so much strength and uh, courage and, and obedience. Because, see, the devil wants, to, wants us to forget the, f the fact, the reality, that people die and go to hell die without the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. He wants us to forget about the reality of hell, the reality of hellfire, the reality of lake of fire. The reality of the great white throne judgment. The reality of our judgment. The judgment seat of Christ. But here on page 893, uh, Dr. Ruckman says about this verse, uh, Proverbs 29, verse 18, footnote number one. A Christian must maintain three visions. The vision of the risen Christ, Acts chapter 9, verses 3 through 10. New Jerusalem, Revelation chapters 21 and 22. And the harvest fields, Matthew chapter 9, 37 through 38. Here it is. A Christian that loses the vision of unsaved people in hell, Matthew 13, 49 to 50, Luke chapter 16, 22 through 31, Revelation 14, 9 through 11, Revelation 20, 11 through 15, is absolutely good for nothing. See yeah. note on Proverbs 24, 10. A false vision is worse than no vision at all. 1 Kings 22, 6 through 12, Jeremiah 29, 23, Ezekiel 13, 6 through 7. What the world calls a vision is depravity degenerated to annihilation. All unsaved prophets have the same prophetic vision. One, get everybody together. Two, level all religions, classes, sexes, and races. Three, have everybody share equally. Four, eliminate war and capital punishment. And five, populate out of space. But really, the part I want to focus on was where Dr. Ruckman says, a Christian that loses the vision of unsaved people in hell, Matthew 13, 4, 9 through 50, Luke 16, 22 through 31, Revelation 14, 9 through 11, Revelation 21 through 50, is absolutely good for nothing. See note on Proverbs 24, 10. And brethren, that is so true. I mean, the only reason why the Lord Jesus Christ hasn't called us up to heaven yet right, is because there's work for us to do. There's labor for us to do. Amen. And you know, where the Lord's mouthpieces, I mean, it's amazing that anything gets done for the Lord considering what the Lord has to work with. Yeah. You know, we're, we're nothing. You know, Amen. The Lord Amen. Jesus Christ said, without me, you can do nothing. Amen. But brethren, you know, it's real that, you know, hell is real. Hellfire is real. The lake of fire is real. And, um, you know, it seems like it's like pulling teeth. I don't know how it is here in West Virginia, but in New York City, to try to get any born-again Christian to do anything for the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. you know, they'd rather, you know, you know be, be playing, you know, sports on a Sunday than be in a Bible-believing right. church. Or when it's time to go street preaching, they make every excuse in the world. But if they had to work overtime, make the extra money, they would say yes to their boss. But, you know, yeah. the Lord, you know, He wants to use us. You know, he yeah. saved us so he can get glory out of us. Yeah. And um, I put a post on Facebook. Um, supposedly the world's population is uh, over 7.5 billion people in the world. I didn't say million, I said billion. And I put a, 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 asked the question, out of the 7.5 billion people in the world, how many do you think are biblically saved, scripturally saved? All kinds of people responded. 
But I really like this one brother's answer. I don't know if you know brother David Cagle from the bookstore, Dr. Ruckman's bookstore, Bible Baptist bookstore. He basically said, based on Operation World statistics, they say about 7% of professing you know, evangelical, born-again you know, Christians are, are, are saved. So that means 93% of the world is going to hell. 93% yeah. of the yeah. world is going to hell fire. 93% of the world is going to the lake of fire. And that's just professing. That's not possessing. Because we know that salvation is when you possess the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Not just profess Amen. the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible says in 1 John 5, 12, He that hath the Son hath life. Amen. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. So if you have the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you have, you have life. You have eternal life. You have everlasting. You don't have temporal life. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ, He doesn't give you conditional security when He saves yeah. you. He gives you eternal Amen. security. Amen. You know, he promises in John 3.15 that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have eternal life. How long is eternal? It's forever. Right. You know, in John 3.16, the Lord Jesus Christ promises, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. So everlasting life is forever. So that means we're never going to burn in hell. We're never going to burn hellfire. We're never going to burn the lake of fire because we put our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And you know, I'm not a Calvinist. That's the doctrine I hate the most out of every false doctrine out of there. That doctrine is from the pit of hell. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ died for everybody. The, the Bible says in 2 Peter 3, 9, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but as long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But I'm going to be 100% honest with you, brethren. It is so supernatural. It is so supernatural how we're born again. Right. It's so supernatural how we're born again Christians. Mm -hmm. The day I got saved, I wasn't looking for the Lord Jesus Christ. I really wasn't. I don't remember what I was doing that particular day. But I read in my Bible where the Lord Jesus Christ says, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And that's Luke chapter 19, verse 10. Amen. And then the parallel passage is Matthew 18, 11, where the Lord Jesus Christ says, For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. Amen. And by the way, if you have an NIV, you won't find it in your, in, in your Bible, because the NIV is not a Bible, it's, it's trash. Amen. It's dumb. The non-inspired version. You know, that's why, you know, you need to be a King James Bible Amen. believer Amen. if you're going to grow in your personal relationship to the Lord Jesus Christ. Like Brother Simon Peter said in 1 Peter 2.2, 2, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. But um, the day I got saved, the day I got born again, the day I became a born again Christian, the day I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, received the Lord. I wasn't looking for Jesus. I wasn't looking for the truth. I wasn't looking for the King James Bible. I wasn't looking for a Bible believing church. But the Lord Jesus Christ said He was looking for me. He was right. looking for you. He was looking for us. Amen. And in Luke chapter 9, verse 56, the Lord Jesus Christ said, For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And my testimony was I was raised a degenerate gambler. My dad, I was, I'm was i six foot four, you know, and um, because of my height, in one sense it, it, was, it was a curse, but in another sense it's a blessing because when you're a street preacher, it helps to be tall because people, you know, they don't give you as much of a hard time if you're like short. But it was actually a curse <laughs> growing up because I looked older than what I really was. And I was able to get into a place I should have never been able to get into. And the devil seemed really use my height to, you know, for people to think I'm older than what I was. And my dad, you know, my mom, they weren't saved until I got saved. I got saved one, one week later. That, you know, they did the best they could. You know, I, I believe our parents, if they're not saved, you know, they're not born and now born again Christian, not King James Bible, if they're not raised with the truth, the whole truth, the Bible, King James, they do the best they can with, with how they were raised, you know. But the thing is, is that um, my mom, she always put the, you know, she wasn't saved, she always put the fear of God in me, never to smoke, drink, or do drugs. I always knew from my mom that that was wrong, so I never ever smoked or did drugs, but the devil got me with gambling, women, pornography, just as bad if not worse. So, but I'm telling you that it's only by the grace of God that I'm not burning in hell right now, I'm not in hell, not in hellfire. Amen. And if we're, if we're saved, if you're saved, if I'm saved, you know, we owe a great debt to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we owe yeah. the Lord Jesus Christ everything. And um, it's our reasonable service to come to a Bible-believing church on Sunday and 
Sunday evening, and if you're not working uh, tomorrow when they have the morning service or the evening service or Tuesday, you you ought to be here to support you know your pastors, support your church, your local King James Obama, and, but for the Lord Jesus Christ and for obedience to the Scriptures. Hebrews 10:25 says. Not forsaking the assembling ourselves together, as a manner of some is, right. but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see it they're approaching. Yeah. And a Christian at a church like a fish out of water, he or she won't survive very long. Amen. Amen. And um, when you know the truth, you can't just go to any old church. Yeah. Because you're not going to have any peace. If you're a King James Bible, especially if you're a Rukmanite, you can't mm -hmm. sit under a pastor that doesn't believe this King James Bible. Amen. Amen. Because, you know, no man has the authority to correct the King about the King about the authority to correct us. Amen. And I'm, it really makes me sick how people sit in judgment upon the Word of God when the Word of God is supposed to sit in judgment upon us. Amen. Amen. And, you know, Amen. I wouldn't want to be in these Bible corrector's shoes if they're even saved, you know, at the judgment of Christ. Amen. Most likely they're going to be at the great white throne judgment. I hope not. I hope they are saved. I don't wish anybody to go to hell except the devil seeing his minions, you know. But, um... You know, we've been given much, brethren, and, you know, we owe a great debt to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And, you know, Amen. we need to be soul conscious. We need to have a burden for souls. You know, we need to have a burden for souls going to hell. We need to have a burden for souls going to hellfire. Amen. We need to have a burden for souls going to the lake of fire. I, myself, personally, I'm obsessed, you know, with souls dying and going to hell. That's all I think about is souls. That's all I think about is if I don't give somebody a track, if I miss an obstacle, it ruins my whole day. Because I feel like I'm accountable, like their blood is on my hands. I know Ezekiel 3 and 33 is written doctrinally to Israel, but still spiritually, you know. If I don't warn people, you know, I don't want those people with the great white throne judgment to be able to point their finger at me and say, Hey, hey Brian, Brian Kelly, they know me, hey you. You were a born-again Christian, you were a Baptist pastor, Baptist preacher, King James Bible believer. You know I was on my way to hell. How could you not warn me? You know, this is what's really going to take place, you know, at the great white throne judgment. We're going to see people who we loved, who we didn't warn, get taken out of hell, get taken out to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. the great white throne judgment. And, you know, they're going to, you know, be so mad at us. So I'd rather them hate me now. Let, let's rather them hate us now for telling the truth than we're holding Amen. the truth for them. Because we're guilty Amen. of spiritual manslaughter when we don't warn the wicked to flee from the wrath to come. When we don't tell our loved ones, you know, our loved ones, family members, co-workers, relatives, neighbors, strangers, about the Lord Jesus Christ and what He's done. How can we keep? How dare we keep the Lord Jesus Christ a secret? Amen. And you see him. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ, we've never seen Him physically, but spiritually, we see Him every day through the pages of the Word of God, right. through the pages Amen. of the King James Bible, and through prayer. And you know. It just bothers me that they say that, um, you know, less than 1% of uh, born-again Christians, you know, basically, you know, preach the gospel, you know, tell others the good news of the gospel, the Lord Jesus Christ. But I want to show you a couple, you know, some scriptures here about, you know, how important it is to warn people, you know, about the, about the reality of hell. But let's go to Proverbs 24, verses 10 through 12. And, um... You'll never be the same once, once you're saved, you know, once the Lord Jesus Christ. You can never go back to the world and have any peace. Right. And the most miserable person on this earth is a backslidden Christian. Because he knows the truth. And the Bible says in James 4, 17, Therefore to him that know to do good and do it for not, to him it is sin. But here in Proverbs chapter 24, look at verses 10 through 12. The King James Bible says, If thou faint in a day of adversity... Thy strength is small. If thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death, and those that are ready to be slain. If thou sayest, Behold, we knew it not. Doth not he that pondereth the heart consider it? And he that keepeth thy soul, doth not he know it? And shall not he render to every man according to his works? See, brethren, we know better. We know that we should give somebody a gospel track. Yeah. You know, Dr. Sam Gipp, he, I, I listened to a lot of his sermons, and uh, now let the Lord call Dr. Ruckman home be with him uh, last year in Brother Jack Chick. I think Dr. Sam Gipp is one of the most important soldiers in the body of Christ because Amen. of his work, his you know, great work for the King James Bible. Amen. And I was listening to one of his sermons one time, and he said that a born-again Christian 
ought to have at least two things on them at, every, at any given time. He said T and T. T and T stands for tracts and a New Testament. So if you got tracts and New Testament, amen. you can lead someone, you know, to the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. amen. And uh, I just want to encourage you to always have gospel tracts on you if you're yeah. a born again believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know, we don't have our own church building, and we meet in my my house in the Bronx, my apartment in the Bronx. So I can't put my home address on the, on the back of the of every gospel tract. So we have a PO box where people can call respond. And, Every once in a while, we get tracks back in the mail where people have gotten saved and they fill in they put their information. And we send them a King James Bible, next step from Jack Chick, and you know Dr. Ruckman books and booklets and DVDs, MP3s. You know, see, we're responsible if we lead somebody to the Lord Jesus Christ. We're responsible to follow up with their spiritual growth. Right. Don't just you know like you know lead them to the Lord Jesus Christ and not give them some you know some you know good spiritual food. You know, the King James Bible. Always give them a King James Bible, you know. Amen. And, uh, you know, that's another thing. It'll cost you to take a stand for the King James Bible. Yeah. Our church right now, we've lost so much financial support because of the King James Bible. But I'd rather have the Lord's blessings than anything else in this, in this <laughs> Amen. world. Amen. You know, Amen. Because Amen. I'm not going to compromise. And my dad, when he was growing up, like I said, my dad was raised Catholic. And... How I know this King James Bible, there's so many reasons, hundreds of reasons, thousands of reasons, but one of the reasons is my dad told me that when he went to grammar school, the priest, the Roman Catholic priest, probably a child molesting pedophile priest, you know, told my dad that uh, he could bring any Bible with him to grammar school except for the King James Bible. Hey, yeah. how about so that? that's how you know yeah. this King knows. James Bible is the only Bible against the great war, the most hey, abominations of earth. You know, against the Roman Catholic institution. And you see, when you're a true King James Bible believer, you're never going to bend. You're never, you're never going right. to compromise the true word of God. Yeah. Uh, we had a millionaire uh, last year supporting our church. He was given $1,000 a month, which really isn't like a tithe if you're a millionaire. But anyway, he wasn't a King James Bible believer, but he loved the public ministry that we do, publishing the name of Jesus and getting the word of God out. And what happened was uh, he gave me an ultimatum. Basically, uh, you know, he became friends with me on Facebook, and then on Facebook, I'm always blasting the perversions. I'm always exposing the, you know, the perversions. Right. And he was getting like sick and tired of it. He loved my posts when I would post pictures of the scripture signs and chick tracks and like that. But because he wasn't a King James Bible believer, you know, Dr. Ruckman says people fear ridicule while they fear anything else. And the Bible says in Proverbs 29:25, the fear of man bringeth the snare. Whoso put his trust in the Lord shall be saved. So, you know, he had other people who he was friends with that probably, I don't know how the old works with Facebook, I'm not too good with technology, but they must have been seeing my pro King James Bible posts and then they're like, why is this, why are you hanging out with this, you know, yeah. you know, this nut. Whack, this nut. <laughs> whack, whack job, nut, you know, fanatic, King James Bible freak, you know, Jesus freak, you know. But, and then he basically, he gave me an ultimatum, and if, I wanted to read you actually, um, his message that uh, he sent me, and I want, if I have time here, but um, what happened is uh, basically, you know, I was put in a position where, you know, either give up my, my, my faith, my belief in the King James Bible, or lose a thousand dollars a month of support. Well, you know what I did, if anybody knows me, you know, basically, he, he, I told him basically he could take a hype that, uh, you yeah. know, People died, you know, to give us this King James Bible. Hey, man. Hey, man. Yeah. This, this King James hey, Bible, man. it has a bloody history. It's a bloody book. Hey, right? man. Uh, the Roman Catholic Church, you know, they used to burn our brothers and sisters and the Lord Jesus at the Lord Jesus got the stake for their feet in the word in the word of God, the King James Bible, the Lord Jesus Christ. How could we ever, you know, give up our faith in the King James Bible? Hey, man. You know, our salvation is connected to the King James Bible. Hey, man. You know, and let me show you a couple of scriptures here. But before I do that, real quick, let me read Dr. Ruckman's note here from Proverbs 24, uh, verse 10 through 12, page 888. Dr. Ruckman says, verses 10 to 12 deal with one of the most serious problems in the body of Christ in America since 1933. The absolute refusal of American Christians to witness and tell unsafe adults they're going to hell yeah. when they die. Although they know they will, they were commanded to witness, Proverbs 31, 8, Acts 1, 8, and to warn people that they could die in their sins and wind up in a lake of fire. 
Ezekiel 18, 20 through 24, Acts 20, 26 through 27. 95% of them will not do it, and about 85% of the preachers will not do it. They do not want to risk being ridiculed or losing their social status or image among their friends Amen. and neighbors. Amen. You know, that is so sad. So in other words, you know, you're going to let people just die and go to hell instead of witness to them. You're going to let people die and go to hell instead of witness to them. I mean, what kind of sorry Christian are we? What kind of sorry Christian Amen. are you? Amen. You know? And you see, the job is to Christ, you know, we're going to lose rewards, you know, if we didn't warn people. You know, we're going to have wood, hay, and stubble where we could have had gold, silver, and precious stones. Yeah. Don't you want to hear, well done, now good and faithful right. servant? Come on, Enter Lord. into the joy of thy Lord. You know, I want to hear those words from my Savior's mouth. Amen. I want to hear those words from my Savior's lips. I want to hear my, those words from my Savior's tongue. I want to hear Brian Kelly, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Yeah, amen. Enter into joy. I don't want to hear that wicked and slothful servant. Yeah, come on, yeah. I mean, yes, you know, I'll go to heaven. I'll, the urban seat of Christ takes place in heaven. You know what? I don't want to be shamed for a thousand years during the millennium. Amen. I want to be ruling and reigning with the Lord Jesus Christ. I want the Lord to allow, allow me to rule over New York City during the millennium. Yeah. And wherever you want to rule over the, the Lord, my life, you have that. You know, he said, delight thyself also in the Lord. He shall give thee the desires of thine heart. You know, brethren, we have to get a vision, you know, for souls dying and going to hell. Amen. We have to have a vision of souls dying and going to hellfire. We have to have a vision of soul. Right. And that, that's a great, you know, start back there. I, I'm impressed with the track rack. Some churches don't even have a track rack in their church. That's a blessing. Yeah. That means you care for souls. That, you know, and let me tell you something. The best thing you can do with your money in this life is to invest it in the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 The Lord Jesus Christ said in Matthew 6, 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Because let me tell you something. It's an eternal investment. You know, when you when you give your money to the Lord, to the work, to the Lord's work, to a King James only Bible and Baptist church, when you support King James only Bible you know, missionaries and you know, when you invested in King James Bibles and gospel tracts, chick tracts, penny tracts, you know, that's what's going to have eternal value. And, you know, it's not in the Bible, but it's a great saying. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Amen. And William Carey, the father of the Baptist missionary movement, he said, expect great things from God, attempt great things for God. Amen. And it's so important to be soul conscious wherever you go. Listen. There have been thousands, tens of thousands, if not more, people have been saved from gospel tracts. You know, it's the, it's the Word of God. The, the Holy Spirit uses the Word of God contained in those King James salvation Amen. tracts Amen. to get people saved. And, you know, that's what it's all about. You know, you don't want to go to heaven empty-handed. You know, yeah. you want, like Dr. Rockman says, you want to have some souls on, on your stringer. You know, you want to definitely, you know... You want, like, when you get to heaven, you want to be in heaven and you want to have other people that are in heaven because the Lord used you to win them to the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says in Proverbs 11.30, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. The wisest thing we could do as born-again Bible Christians, King James Bible, is to win souls for the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what? We're not responsible for the outcome. We're not responsible for the result. Just be faithful and plant in a seed. You'd be surprised when you just leave a track around, somebody finds it, picks it up, and gets saved. It's that, I mean, how hard is it? How difficult is it to give somebody a track? And if you're shy, you can send tracks through the mail. You can mail people tracks. So, many, so much you can do with gospel tracks. And, you know, really, it's, it's, just being, it's just being obedient and loving the Lord enough to obey His Word. Amen. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And one of his commandments is to go into all the world and preach the gospel of every creature. Amen. You know, we want to show the Lord Jesus Christ how much we love him for, right. for him saving right. us from hell. For him saving us from hellfire. I mean, he could have allowed us to die and go to hell, brethren. Instead of being in this wonderful King James Holy Bible and Baptist church, we all could have been in hell by now burning together. You know, weeping, wailing, gnashing our teeth. I don't know why some Christians, you know, they don't... Um, appreciate their salvation. I know I'm like that sometimes too. I get murmuring and whining and griping and disputing, you know, but really, we should be the most joyful and happiest Amen. people. We're never yeah. going to go to hell. We're never going to burn hell. Yeah. We're never going to go to hell. Hey, we, can never, we can never be cast into the lake of fire. 
You'll praise the Lord Jesus Christ for eternal security, once saved, always saved. Because if I could have lost my salvation, if you could have lost yourself, we, we, we lose it every day. Long time. Yeah. You know, Amen. Amen. the Bible says, O wretched man that I am, who yeah. shall deliver me from the body of this Amen. death? The Apostle Paul, who I believe was one of the greatest Christians that ever lived, if not the greatest Christian, I, Dr. Ruckman, I consider him right up there with Paul the Apostle. He said, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. I mean, he said that with the Holy Spirit in him. He said that with the... So even though the Amen. Lord is in us, the only good thing in us is the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. You know, and, um, you know, it's just so amazing that um, we've had this supernatural divine revelation. Salvation is the greatest miracle yeah. in the world. Yeah. The new birth is the greatest miracle in the world. Amen. I mean, it's almost like too good to be true. Amen. I mean... I mean, just think about it, you know, one second we're on our way to hell, the next second after receiving the Lord Jesus Christ, we're now on our way to heaven. <laughs> I mean, it's a, salvation is a miracle, salvation hey, is a right. mystery. I mean, like I said, um, I hate the doctrine of Calvinism, you know, yeah. and I'm a Bible believer, thank the Lord for that, but, right. you know, it's just, it's, it, it amazes me that I'm saved, and especially the fact that I'm going to go to heaven after living such a wicked, sinful life. Unfortunately, even after I was saved, because the flesh is insane. But thank God for the blood of the Lord Jesus amen. Christ. Yes, sir. Amen. But I want to share this. Uh, thank God I don't hate to use the word share, but I want to, you know, just see if I can find this message real quick. This was the message this uh, this guy named Kevin, you know, wanted to get me to compromise about the Bible about the Bible issue. He sent me and uh, basically, you know. I don't like ultimatums, but especially when it has to do with the Word of God, the King James Bible. And uh, I'm not a hireling. So when you're a hireling, you know, you don't care about the, the, the sheep, you know, yeah. the flock, you know. But when you're a God-called preacher, when you're a God-called pastor, God-called shepherd, there's no, all the money in the world can't buy you. I'm not for sale. You know, you're not for sale. We're not for sale. So, um, and, you know, the Lord has blessed myself since, our church since, you know, our ministry since. But, um... Like Dr. Ruckman says, uh, even if you got no money, just the fact that the Lord called you to preach, it's the highest honor in this, in this world. Yeah, it's right, the yeah. highest calling in this world. Yeah. Even if you don't have two nickels to rub together, yeah. the fact that the Lord would want to use me, use you, use us to you know, get his word out, to get other people saved. I mean, Amen. You know, we don't deserve to be, do anything for the Lord Jesus Christ. Who am I? Who are we? Who are you? You know, Amen. we're just, you know, sinners, you know, saved by the grace of God. Amen. Yet the Lord wants to get glory out of us. I mean, it's so humbling, brethren. I just, it, blow, it blows me away sometimes when I think about it. I'm, I'm so messed up, you know, with sin and struggle. Every day it's a fight with the flesh, the world, the devil, you know, sin, the same temptation, but... Praise the Lord that, you know, for a just man falls seven times and riseth up again. Hey, but hey, the man. wicked shall fall into mischief, you know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Hey, 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 Praise hey, the man. Lord. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. And praise the Lord. He that covered his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth to forsake them shall have mercy. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ, he's such a wonderful, merciful Savior. He'll always take you back. He's married to the backslider. Just come back to him if you stray. If you're a prodigal son, if you're a prodigal daughter, return home to your Heavenly Father. He'll welcome you with open arms. You know, he'll kill the fatty calf for you. He'll put a ring on your finger. That's right. He'll clothe you with the best robe. The Lord Jesus Christ has the best for us. The devil is such a liar. Amen. He's going to the lake of fire. He wants to rob your joy, our joy, my joy. He wants to rob our peace, my peace, your peace. Because, you know, he's a sadist. The only pleasure the devil Satan gets is seeing people burn and suffer, you know. But the Lord Jesus Christ said, I'm coming to have life and have a more abundant life. Amen. I'm telling you, the only life worth living is, li is the life of living, serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Because, Amen. you know, sin will take you farther than you want to go. Sin will keep you long. Sin will make you pay more than you want to pay. And, you know... When you're living for the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't have to look over your shoulder. You know, when you're serving the Lord Jesus, you don't have to have a guilty conscience. You know, really, sin ruins everything, brethren. Sin Amen. is All the right. cause of, you know, it, it just destroys families, it destroys church, it destroys marriages. It just, it's, this world is under a curse because yeah. of sin. And the devil's sin, he's a God in this world. 
and praise the Lord Jesus Christ that we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Yeah. And you know, we have a big mission, brethren. If you're saved, if you're born, if you're born, you know, our mission is big. What I mean by that is there's over seven billion souls going to hell. There's over seven billion souls going to hellfire. So over seven billion souls. What are we doing about it? You know? We can win people one by one. That's how you want to change this world. You're never going to change the whole entire world, but you know what? You can get a few souls saved here and there, and that'll make a difference, because think about it. The brother that led Dr. Peter S. Ruckman to the Lord Jesus Christ, his name was Hugh Pyle. That's who led Dr. Ruckman to the Lord. He never he probably imagined in, in, in his wildest dreams that he was going to lead one of the greatest soul winners to the Lord Jesus Christ. The man who led Dr. Uh, uh, brother Jack Chick to the Lord Jesus Christ, Charlie Fuller. Look at the fruit of Brother Jack Chick's ministry. The man who led Billy Sunday, and I would never say Billy Graham, because who knows, you know, Billy Graham, you know, if he ever was really truly saved. I hope yeah. he was. If he was, he still saved. You don't lose your salvation. But like Dr. Ruckman says, some Christians aren't worth 10 cents. Some Christians aren't worth shooting because they're living for the flesh, the world, the devil, right. sin, right. sin, temptations. And they're not going to have any rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. They're not going to, they're going to be so ashamed that they live for the fleshly things, worldly things, carnal things, temporal things. And, you know, I, it's not about what's down here, brethren. It's about what's up there. Amen. You know, Amen. The Bible says the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. We need to live for the eternal. You know, the Amen. Lord Jesus Christ said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Amen. And the Lord Jesus Christ said that three times. He said that once in Matthew 24, 35. He said also again in Mark 13, 31. He said also in Luke 21, 33. And when the Lord Jesus Christ says something once, we need to take heed. Imagine three times he repeats himself. That's how important his words are. That's how important his King James Bible is. And you need to, we need to invest in, in things that are eternal. There's only three things that's eternal in this life. The King James Bible, the Trinity, the Godhead, and the souls of men and women for whom the Lord Jesus Christ died for, which is everybody. Amen. So that's what we need to be spending our time, our treasure, our talents on, because Amen. that's what's going to give us the greatest dividend, the greatest interest, the greatest reward at the judgment seat of Christ. That's what's going to abide the fire, if we did it with the right motive. Because it's not how much you do, it's why you do what you do. Amen. And it's not the quantity of what we do, it's the quality. And the Lord is going to judge, the, the, He knows the motives and intents of our heart. He knows why you came to church today. He knows why you tithe. He knows why you give. He knows why you support missionaries. He knows... You know why you, you, you want to come to revi Revival all this week. He knows even if you're planning on not coming. Which, you know, plan on coming. Change your, have a change of heart because when you come to church, it encourages others to come to church. Right. You know, and the Bible says, Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man shall counsel his friend. Let me try to find this message for you real quick here. Um, I'm so bad at technology. Pray for me. You know, I'm really, uh, my wife is the genius this morning. She's the beauty and brains of the family. Please keep my wife in prayer too. Let Lord one, if you guys have this next year, I'd like to bring her down by the grace of God. But um, it's so important not to be a compromiser, brethren. And th three ways the Lord knocks a lot of pastors, preachers, Christians out of ministry. Number one, you know, women. Number two, pride. Number three, finances. And the same thing for women. You gotta be on guard for you know, men, pride, and finance also. But um, let me just try to find this real quick. I apologize. I think it's important for you to, to hear this because the devil will tempt you. The devil will tempt you. For the love of money is the root of all evil, That's right. which while some covet after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through many sorrows. Amen. The devil hates that verse. That's why he's changing all the perversions. <laughs> you know? Amen. So praise the Lord for the King James Bible. But anyway, um, this, uh, this uh, guy's name is uh, Kevin. And it's, it's such a shame because... The guy is a millionaire. Could you imagine if he was a King James Bible believer, what he could do for the Lord Jesus Christ with his money? Yeah. And by the way, Dr. Ruckman says the way to do a great work for the Lord Jesus Christ on this earth is to have a vision of souls dying and going to hell and couple it with someone who's got the money. And I really truly believe that. But you know what? It's always the people that don't have the money that want to do the most for the Lord because they love the Lord. Just like the, the lady who the Lord forgave. Of all, her, of all her sins. You know, she loved the Lord much because she was forgiven much. 
See, if, you, if you've been forgiven a little, you love the Lord a little. If you've been forgiven a lot, you love the Lord a lot. Amen. And that's my case. I've been forgiven so much by the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm so in love with the Lord Jesus Christ that, you know, but I need to love him more. We need to love him. We can never be enough with the Lord Jesus, love, enough in love with the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, the Bible says we love him because he first loved us. Right. But here, by the grace of God, I think I found it here. And I'll pray for him, because you know what, you never know, maybe he'll come around. You know what I'm trying to say? I, I doubt it. Unfortunately, I doubt I, I Maybe I should, have, I should have more faith. But anyway, he's got this uh, devil, so-called pastor that is found. He's found, of course, he's not a Bible believer, a King James Bible. But anyway, this is what he said. This was back in uh, January 7th of this year. He said, Brian, Kevin here, I am deeply concerned about your disparaging posts against non-King James Version Bible lovers. Consider this, I have not read a King James Version in over 30 years. I don't understand them. I am a modest man of modest understanding, and NIV and ESV and many other versions powerfully and positively impact my life. Based on what you know of me, do you think I am following a fraud version? and thus am no better than a lost Muslim? Because I put a, a, a post on Facebook that Muslims have more faith in their unholy Quran than professing Christians have in their Bible. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's so true. You will never see a Muslim admit that his unholy Quran has errors in it. Right. But you have right. so many professing Christians who want to attack exactly. the King James Bible hey, 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 hey. and say he's got errors in it. It's yeah. a bunch of hogwash. It's we a bunch of dumb Muslims. Muslim. So, hey, I'm going to try to make this real quick. It's almost 12 o'clock. It says, so he says, that is how you make me feel. See? You're not supposed to go by your feelings. You're supposed yeah. to go by, thus saith the Lord, and what saith the Scripture. I said, that is how you make me feel. Yet, regardless of my Bible version, the Holy Spirit is alive. I am not saved by any version of the Bible. I am saved by faith in Christ. It sounds nice, but really it doesn't line up with the Scriptures. Because the Bible says, receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Amen. Yes, you're saved by the Lord Jesus Christ, but you're also saved by the King James Bible. We also saved by the Word of God. 1 Peter 1.23 says, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the Word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Amen. Continuing on, he says, I am not saved by any version of the Bible. I am saved by faith in Christ. You need to decide if this is an important core belief. You better believe it's an important core. It, it's, my, it's everything. It's my life. It's my, life. It's my salvation. It's how I came to know about the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It sa he says, if disparaging comments are continued, I am left to my core belief of discontinuing funding for disparaging messengers. It's one thing to hold the view, no problem. It's quite another to publicly slander others who do not, like me, hold that view. These comments do not help your ministry. And then I sent him a, a, a thing back, and then he said, I appreciate the note, but I will need to get counsel. You know where he's going to get counsel from? A, a, a devil, so-called pastor, who doesn't believe the King James, who believes these Roman Catholic Bibles, Satanic right. demonic Bibles. So he says, I appreciate the note, but I will need to get counsel about path forward on future funding. I don't have peace about you publicly blasting NIV and ESV. I find it so unhelpful to your ministry of winning souls. And then the message he said, Brother, I saw a counsel over lunch today. I got ungodly counsel. You don't go to a, a non-King James about being a pastor for, for godly counsel, godly with godly advice, when you don't even believe the book. <laughs> so he says, brother, I saw a counsel over at lunch today with a pastor. It sounds to us like you're not open to agape love. <laughs> you know? You just and like wise love. counsel. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I believe you are getting bad advice that is overly legalistic. <laughs> While I love, love your work and love you as a brother, I cannot support in good conscience a ministry, a messenger of God who considers other versions of the Bible to be frauds and then publicly defaming them as satanic or misleading. It's not helpful to your ministry and does not draw people to the Lord. And in fact, turns them away. No. What turns people away is these perversions. Yeah. That's why people aren't getting saved because they say you Christians have all these different Bibles. Right. You know, just like there's one way to heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. No man cometh unto the Father. There could only be one Bible that we could trust 100% in the English language, and that's the King James Bible. Amen. So, real quick, he says, it does not help to your ministry and does not draw people to the Lord. In fact, I'm happy to talk further about it. 
but I am stopping funding Effector 116. I will let this next check go through and then we'll stop. Lovingly, Kevin. So pray for him because I'm never going to, you know, I'm never going to bend or, or, or bow when it comes to, you know, my faith, my trust, and my, my belief Amen. in the King James Bible because, like I said, I would, I, would, I would be a Judas Iscariot if I ever did. I would be the biggest traitor if I ever did because to whom much is given, much is required. Oh, brothers and sisters, never lose your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't let nobody ever destroy your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And never lose your faith in the King James Bible. Don't let anybody ever show your faith in the Amen. King James Bible. Amen. And appreciate, you know, a man of God like Pastor Lucas. And appreciate what you got here. This is rare in 2017. Don't take this King James only Bible being in church for granted. Don't take Amen. your pastor for granted. Don't take, you know, bro Brother Paul and Brother James. Brother Jamie. You, know, you got King James Bible being men. In this church, and you know, you got people to look up to in, in the Lord. So let's just pray. Lord, thank you so much. I'm up here rammed in my mouth. I hope it was pleasing to you, Lord. You said open my mouth wide and I will fill it, Lord. I pray I did a good good job for you today, Lord Jesus Christ. I pray the saints were admonished, encouraged, built up in the most holy faith. I pray, Lord, that the scriptures that we, we, we I read today from your holy and precious word key to, that was preached, that was taught. I pray, Lord, that it would just increase people's faith in you, Lord, in your word, the King James Bible. You said, so that faith come up by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Lord, please bless the message that Brother Howe is going to give now, Lord, whoever else is preaching now. And I just pray for anybody who's not saved here in this church, Lord, that they would get saved. They would get Amen. born again, become a born again if they're not saved. They are saved, Lord. Just bless everyone here, Lord. Meet their need like only you can, Lord. And we love you so much, Lord Jesus Christ. Please come soon, Lord. Even yes. so, come, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord Jesus Christ, with all our hearts, through all our souls, with all our strength, because you first loved us. And I thank you so much for this opportunity, Lord. Bless this church, Lord. Bless both fundamental Baptist church, Lord. Please give the increase to this.